I care about you guys too much to just come out and say, the Blackberry Key 2 is bad, don't buy it. Possibly preventing you from buying one and loving it just because of my horrible first impressions. So I actually spent the last four weeks with this thing as my daily driver. Now the TLDR is still, I don't like it and I don't recommend it. So you, you can, I guess you can stop watching now if that's all you wanted to know, but I would really appreciate it if you suffer through the rest of this video with me so that I can feel like the effort wasn't for nothing. Speaking of appreciation, I also appreciate our sponsor, Thermaltake. Thermaltake's View 71 supports mini ITX, micro ATX, ATX, and EATX motherboards with a variety of mounting options for your GPU and radiator. Check it out today at the link below. Not everything about the BlackBerry Key 2 is bad. Not even close, actually. For example, it's black. I like the color black. And on paper, its features are actually pretty complete for the year 2018. Spec-wise, only the mid-tier Snapdragon 660 processor stands out as inappropriate given the phone's $650 off contract price for the 6 gig, 64 gig storage version. And TCL, who licenses BlackBerry software and the BlackBerry name for this hardware, has even avoided some of the annoyances of modern devices by including a headphone jack and allowing user upgradable storage through a micro SD card. It's just too bad that they created a whole lot of other annoyances while they were at it. Let's start with the keyboard. Before going any further, it's probably important to provide some context. I rocked a BlackBerry 8700 for a couple of years back in the late 2000s, and I actually loved that thing. I used to love my BlackBerry. I still do. The BlackBerry Key 2. And at the time, it felt like a huge typing downgrade when I transitioned to the iPhone 4 in 2010. I bought an iPhone 4. Unfortunately for the BlackBerry brand, on-screen keyboards have improved a lot since iOS 4, and theirs has gotten worse. So I came in expecting the Key 2 to feel like the embrace of an old friend, and it ended up being more like making love to a stranger, responding to my touch in ways I didn't expect or understand, and then constantly punishing me for doing things wrong. The smile keyboard layout that made the keys on older Blackberries feel offset, like a desktop keyboard instead of a grid, is gone, and so are the gaps between the keys that are ever so important, especially if you have bigger fingers, to finding your way around without looking. And I get that I'm a bit of a punctuation nerd by the standards of the chat snap generation, but no dedicated period key drove me absolutely bonkers. Now, there are some really neat features. You can program shortcut key combos, like little mini macros to launch apps. You can reprogram the currency key, and you can customize the layout of the symbol key menu, which is really nice. And this one actually took me a week to figure out, but you can swipe back just over top of the keys to backspace. You can swipe up on the corresponding part of the keyboard to accept an autocorrect prediction, and you can even swipe style type on these physical keys if you want. The issue here is just that if I wanted to do those things, especially that last one, I could do them on a software keyboard. And then I could even get back the context sensitive functionality of a software keyboard, like a single button press for .com, which takes five button presses here, and a vast menu of emojis while I'm at it. Not to mention all of the other things that I can do with more screen real estate. I mean, the funny thing about this is I actually went straight from the Find X to this thing. And going from 87% screen to body ratio to about 55 was a shock. Now, the quality of the display is fine. And actually, so are the speakers for that matter, except there's no stereo effect. But everything from movies that look like they are both pillar and letterboxed due to the wonky three by two aspect ratio to even reading text articles was a bad 
experience when it comes to content consumption. And that's not something that can be improved. I mean, back to, to reading. More and more mobile web content is designed around the full screen experience, with many smartphone manufacturers going as far as to remove even software buttons in favor of gestures. And like, look at this page that I screen captured here. It manages to show only a tiny amount of actual article with the rest taken up by a highlighted quote and an ad. So you end up doing a lot of scrolling, something that I found particularly unergonomic about this phone. And that's due to the position of the non-reconfigurable hardware nav buttons that sit between the keyboard and the screen. I ended up accidentally hitting those from time to time, both when using the screen for scrolling and when swiping over top of the keyboard for scrolling. Now, BlackBerry's argument, I actually had a call with them about this, is that this is a communication device, not a content consumption device. But surely even the world's most boring executive might want to watch a TED talk or take a picture of the grandkids or something. I, I mean, <laughs> For me, this it was really frustrating because normally I try to full switch to a device that I'm reviewing. That's how I find some of the annoyances that other people might miss. But I had to pull the iPhone out of my back pocket a lot with this one to take pictures and videos. Like you'll get usable shots sometimes and it's certainly better than having nothing. But look at these artifacts around my daughter's face in this shot. I don't remember the last time I saw anything like that. So then, with all of that in mind, that communication experience better be amazing. So let's talk about that then. Fantastic battery life. That's a phone that I haven't had to charge for two days. Check. Easy access to contacts and calendars just swiping over from the right. Check that too. Configurable convenience key profiles for home, work, and driving. Well, it beats the ever living crap out of some of the, you know, extra side button functionality that I've seen. And the BlackBerry Hub does, in fairness, a pretty good job of aggregating all of your communication streams in one place if you're the kind of person who finds yourself easily confused by multiple apps. So, okay, obnoxious default email signature aside, there are definitely some baby boomers that I wish I could give this to, in particular, the BlackBerry Hub. But it just comes with, in my opinion, too many compromises. I mean, a big part of BlackBerry's argument for these licensed phones running their validated software is BlackBerry-grade security. And DTEC is actually admittedly very cool. It gives you an easy way to do a security checkup on your phone, and for me, more importantly, see exactly what the crap your apps are doing with those permissions that you granted them, both in the foreground and the background with timestamps on everything. And from reading through a BlackBerry provided white paper, it looks like there actually are still a lot of enterprise grade security and management features here that I'm not aware of Android or iOS equivalents for. But this is a consumer focused channel and from a consumer standpoint, frankly, I would rather see some kind of commitment to future Android updates versus some of these features. I mean, the Priv launched in late 2015 and never even got Nougat. So bottom line is, I think the neighbor kid actually put it pretty well when he rolled up on his bike and the first thing out of his mouth when he saw my phone was, hey, that's weird, that looks like an old school Blackberry but with a touchscreen. So the conclusion is what it is for every BlackBerry phone review. If you really like Blackberries, have fun. If you don't, there's frankly nothing about this one that is likely to change your mind. Speaking of changing your mind, if you're using some other accounting solution, Maybe I can change your mind and get you to have a look at FreshBooks. FreshBooks is custom built for the way you want to work, whether you're a small business owner or a freelancer. It's a simple way to be more productive, more organized, and to get paid faster and lets you send professional looking invoices in less than 30 seconds. With FreshBooks, you can set up online payments with just a couple of clicks to get paid up to four days faster, and you can see once your client has opened your invoice for the first time to put an end to the guessing games. For an unrestricted 30-day free trial, just go to freshbooks.com slash tech tips and enter Linus Tech Tips in the How Did You Hear About Us section.
So thanks for watching, guys. If this video sucked, you know what to do. But if it was awesome, get subscribed, hit that like button, or check out the link to where to buy the stuff we featured at the link in the video description. Did I say that twice? Whatever. The point is, we also have our merch store down there and our community forum, which you should totally join. By the way, for those of you wondering why exactly the Find X still has like a sticker on the back and stuff, okay, when I switched from this to the Key 2, I was switching from the engineering sample this to the Key 2. This is my retail one. This just arrived today. I will be starting my review of this today. Thank freaking Goodness, I'm done with that thing. It's like annoying in ways that were hard to find a way to write into a script. Like when you can't say what's bad about it, but it's just not pleasant. It's like a, you know, like an awkward foot massage.